Cosmic Brilliance, and today is the start of a mini series that doesn't just reveal one cosmically brilliant person, but an entire family of 10 members that are literally all cosmically brilliant. Today's show is part one of a copyrighted mini series we're doing together, and the subtitle is Meet Australian 10 Member Family all with superpowers. Now I've mentioned before in some of my previous shows that almost all the movers and shakers, stereotype quotes of course, that we have read about or seen in the movies, the leaders, the Caesars, the Pharaohs, the angelics, they're incarnated or in ships above or in densities above because this is a very exciting time. We're working on ascending and staying on the positive timeline back to fifth density and onwards. And those that played key roles in our past that are not incarnated are helping out because ultimately we are all one. Planet Earth, the galactic name tends to be Terra, the soul, her soul name is Gaia, is the center microcosmic point in this universe and is considered the best show in the galaxy, much better than primetime TV and a lot more truthful, right? So many of us come from what is called the future to ensure humanity and Gaia's freedom. Some come from what is called the past. All time in quantum physics and advanced science tells us that it is made up and actually kind of simultaneous in the quantum field. So to understand this fact better, refer to my last two shows that are on the unity theory and that will assist you. I am very excited about this multiple part mini series we are providing for you with my guest, Elsa Dillon from Australia. You're about to be introduced to a wonderful, gracious, wise being who along with her husband and eight children, oh my God, have all incarnated together on Gaia. This is only their second incarnation here. Their life in ancient Egypt, you will eventually recognize once their names are mentioned later on. They are back on earth incarnated together again in the same soul family that they were in ancient Egypt. So why did the entire soul family agree to return here again? She will answer those questions, perhaps to heal something in ancestral lineages, perhaps to help awaken and guide those of us to do the same, that have the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the willingness mentally to expand and be curious, and the knowing heart to remember the truth of our divine beingness. In this series, you will hear many, many amazing details to my questions. I know you will find this an exciting series as you learn about this Australian family who have come back together and brought profound gifts, what would be considered super abilities or in pop culture, superpowers. Why? To assist Gaia and guide us through this time of revelation truth disclosure and activation of ourselves as galactic humans. I'm very honored now to introduce my guest, Elsa Dillon, who is generously willing to share her courageous and extraordinary multidimensional personal and family experiences. And their family is an example for all of us representing true multidimensionality and capacity that is held in all of our galactic being this, thus co-creating the world we hold in our expanded vision together. So welcome Elsa, I'm so happy you are here and deeply honored that you are willing to share with the world so many extraordinary events that you hold most sacred to you and your family. Thank you, Marilee, for having us here. <laughs> so let me first ask, what prompted you to contact me and why? Uh, when I hear people's voices, their frequency, um, generally I get messages and I had messages to 
to alert an alert, like it's uh, an alarm bell that goes off. And so that I heard your frequency and I had to contact you. That's, <laughs> that's fun. How I do it. <laughs> that's how I do it. <laughs> wow. That saves a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> I really feel I'm the fortunate one. I really do. And thank you for your family's trust in me with this series of shows we're going to do. It takes a lot of courage and a sense of a very strong mission to be willing to reveal the experiences of your personal family, especially as a mother, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. It's it's one thing to, to bring up yourself, but to commit your partner, but then also to commit all your children, your offspring, who are young and innocent. Uh, it's it has it's probably been one of the biggest challenges of the of the coming out and sharing the information. I it's can challenging. Imagine. Yeah. I can imagine because much of this will be new for people mm -hmm. and a different version of what they've learned, certainly in traditional schools. So thank you for that trust. So how about if we first begin with you sharing a little bit about your husband, Richard, who was responsible in a manner of speaking for bringing you all together. Would you like to share a little bit about that, please? Um, Richard is an amazing man. <laughs> he, uh, I'll start from the beginning. He was a breech baby, so he was facing the wrong way. And his mother told me that he turned 30 minutes before his birth, which if you know Richard, that is so Richard. <laughs> and people have asked me when, when has Richard awakened and the messages I have is from that turning point where he decided to enter, <laughs> literally enter. Uh, wow. He is he has been awakened from from then he is meditates in the sun from from very young he will lie in the sun and it feels like he zooms off it's amazing how he meditates it's just instantaneous with the heat of the sun's energy um it's one of the first irritating things about him with me because it's 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 challenging, you know, lying next to someone and they can meditate instantly and like within a second. And then I, I'm I'm attempting to meditate next to him. I can't. He's too buzzy. <laughs> oh, really high vibration. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I cannot. A lot of the times, I I find it tricky to meditate next to him because he's just like this. <laughs> uh, but it's entertaining as well. So, so this whole awakening for me, being with Richard, is entertaining because you have the frustration, the the wife side, but then you have the spiritual side coming through. So it 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 goes back and forth, back and forth. So it it's interesting. He is an amazing chess player, amazing from the age of. Uh, three or four he would be playing adults and no one could beat him he was he would just always win people from everywhere would come and play him as a child uh, after that he was um, Australian motocross champion so he would not only lap people but lap twice and win the race. I mean, we're How talking old was he at that. He was a racing um, adult class, but he was a child. So again, yeah, amazing. And he just, would ask, to, just to explain to some people what motocross is, <laughs> it's um, uh, endurance riding. Uh, motocross is uh, dirt bikes doing those huge jumps at great speeds. With lots of mud, <laughs> very dangerous sport. Um, Motorcycles, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Some he pretty... was like a young teen, and he was winning against adults in yes. the cross 
Yes. What was interesting is that through his childhood, he went to a Steiner school. Mm. And at that time with Steiner schools and the way they practiced then, he was not allowed to speak of his competition. So he was an Australian champion and in all the newspapers uh, suppressing uh, what he does really. Uh, He used to astro travel and he would uh, fly downstairs and speak openly about that to me when I first met him as a child. Yeah. Was that shocking to you? I think uh, on our first date, I spilled orange juice and my drink in the restaurant on him twice. (laughs) (laughs) I was my when I met Richard, (laughs) my mouth my mouth was like on the the floor of (laughs) of the restaurant. I was like, "Who is this man?" (laughs) It was it was bizarre. Um, He he came looking for me. Yeah. He he was very interested in me as a photographer and both Richard and I are fashion photographers and uh, he has callings and he follows them and he has followed them since he was a child and he's never listened to anyone except him, his own inner, inner voice, including his parents. He would do what he felt was the right thing to do all the time. And he lives by that. He walks it, he talks it, he lives it, he breathes it. And it's amazing to walk with him. It is. It's amazing to walk with someone like that, someone that's in their truth. It's, it's, a, it's a different feeling. It can, it can stir a lot of negativity as well within yourself, with shadows within yourself. It but is. The level a, of integrity and not compromising. Of course, that makes yeah. it challenging in relationships. But on the other hand, it's admirable. How many people do you know are like that? You know, it's like that's where we need to all move to, listening to our higher self and our over yeah. self. Now, Rudolf Steiner schools are awesome. So he didn't get programmed in traditional schools, which is wonderful. And then you kind of briefly went over that you were fashion and photography and videography and folks. These guys were really good and well-known and their work is beautiful. And it took them all over, right? New York and LA. So that was your first date was spilling orange juice on him. (laughs) How did he handle that? (laughs) Uh, Well, I think one of the things that Richard found interesting with me is that no matter how up here he was how playful I was um Mm. so I would be talking to Richard and then start talking to an animal and he he would be like who are you talking to and oh I'm talking to the bird and he's talking to a bird and I'm like why aren't you talking to the bird (laughs) so so a playful a playfulness um attraction happened between us as well so he he liked the playfulness of me and uh and then you know I started catching him talk to animals (laughs) (laughs) that's so beautiful because there's an equality there you have this magical playful you know beautiful presence and uh so you actually presented to him something that he didn't know or had yeah. come practice, right? So that's going yeah. to keep him interested and in getting mm. to know you too. You just, you have beautiful energy, absolutely beautiful energy. So that's wonderful. I love the um, balance of that and that you both are entertained with each other too, because you've been married how long now? Uh, 25, 26 years, I think. Yeah. Wow. Now, I want to go back to something you mentioned, uh, because I love details, is <clears throat> he would meditate out in the sun, and then you yeah. said he would fly off. So in quantum physics and other studies I've done, and you tell me if you agree, um, the sun is has different names like raw, but the sun is considered a portal that uh, passes from the great central sun, which you could say kind of a source source 
passes information, photonic, downloads everything through the sun to our planet and to us. Uh, do you think he receives those and he is responding? Like light codes, information codes, anything like that? Definitely. Yeah, okay. definitely. without a doubt. Because yeah. the ease of which he does it, it's almost like the sensing I'm getting is the sun is his home, kind of. It's like a, we know the sun's a stargate. So when, when you see him take off, now you have second sight and all that, which you'll explain a little later. But when you see him take off, <laughs> is it like the body goes <laughs> like that and, you know, and goes asleep and he's off? Or is he quote, good at faking it, like holding the book <laughs> or whatever, but you know he's gone. Uh, it is it is like his body is left his shell. It's not there. It's, his soul it's, is left his shell. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it's usually when I'm in conversation with him, so that's what I was saying is that... Uh, I've had to get used to it over the, over the years because I'll be in the midst of conversation and then he's gone. Oh, he's gone. How rude. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. How rude, right? <laughs> wow, that certainly works on your ego, you know? It's, yeah, like, he's be, he, it's like he's being called off for something mm. or called out for bigger purpose. That's so fascinating. It, it, it was at first, though, it, I, I felt that it was rude. <laughs> yeah. Did you lecture him? <laughs> but then, it, well, yeah, I would get kind of annoyed. Sometimes I'd poke him to wake him up. <laughs> I'd interrupt. <laughs> well, well, I have some girlfriends that also can't sleep with their partners if the energy isn't compatible. They can't be in the same bed because one can have a buzzy or a higher or whatever. And you were saying he runs a very, very high yeah. energy. Well, that's, that's a very interesting topic you bring up with the bedroom because we have had that a lot and we have to uh, place different things in the bedroom and feng shui the bedroom differently depending on where we live, like uh, what land we're over and um, which way the house is facing and we have to really balance out our bedroom. Otherwise, only one can sleep in the bed because one is, and I, it's, it, it, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but because you do it every night, it's huge. It, it's, it is huge. It's, it's a huge. huge. It's a huge deal, but it's more and more common. You're not alone. I want you to know that. So yeah. it, it, you're not alone. Because um, it affects your healing time. It affects your dream time. It affects your connection time. Like it affects quite a few things. So not only was this happening for Richard, but he would find that happening with me as well. So if I was having lots of beans come through while I'm in my sleep, um, he can't sleep because. It's Grand Central said, Station. <laughs> it's Grand Central Station. <laughs> right? Yeah. If people understand this and they realize that it's it's the frequency, if they understand it, imagine how much that helps a marital situation rather than having anger with each other. Because if, you're, if you don't tap into this or you're unaware of this, this can turn into severe arguments. <laughs> it Absolute, can. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you ever, you and Richard, been next to each other and shared the same dream? No, but we have been through meditations and had the same meditation where we do exactly the same thing. We also had someone, other people, be the, the third person and they tap into the same thing as well, which is, it's amazing <laughs> because you, what you're doing is then tapping into a, a triangle then and it's very powerful. It, it is it's extremely powerful. The masculine's coming to join the feminine, whether it's up or down or however you want to label it. And now the two, the two are, are, are working together. Yes. Yes. 
and it, of course there's masculine and feminine in both of course male and female so that's exactly one of the most important things to work on now is balancing the the quote masculine and feminine within ourselves yeah to, which will then help this the new seeds coming in and it's important for these new seeds to have that now when she says new seeds um uh, uh, you're referring to advanced children, star seeds, things like that, correct? The new children, any new child coming through needs the opportunity to have the male and the female energy in a balanced state to go, go through these next spins. And you should know because you were doing multiple things, you were working uh giving birth you know raising the kids doing all this now a few more things for Richard and then we'll move on Richard you said has always maintained his integrity and has never compromised which I happen to think is really exceptional and I admire considering the environment of you both being top photographers with all the rich and famous people so yes. obviously that tells me you were exposed to some sordid underworkings of society, shall we say. And I don't know how he was raised or if he was exposed at an early age. Um, but do you want to explain that a little bit about how you dealt with that? With, um, with Richard and myself, we have come across a lot of celebrities and very well-known politicians, um, just well-known people, also major owners in companies, the big names in companies that we would come across in our path. And uh, now I'm starting to realise that we had eye contact with those people for a reason. Mm -hmm. they have they have seen my eyes or Richard's and if generally a lot of the celebrities that are still not the so-called new celebrities but the um the classics <laughs> they've seen our eyes they've either seen mine or Richard's and I, I think something about a truth yes or a, tr or a truce a truce is coming yes. A truce. That's beautifully said because they know who you are. And mm -hmm. so they have respect for it and they give you space. So you never got, they never tried to pull you into too much. They yeah. just, you both did your own things, right? Correct. And also it's not just with the photography. We find people that in these uh, levels of hierarchy just seem to cross our path in the most peculiar situations and uh we had uh the, i think at the g20 in brisbane and there was a big uh all the politicians were here and they had a secret party in the byron hinterland so they the g20 was in brisbane and they came and had a secret party in a luxurious home and we were on our shopping trip coming home and Richard crossed paths with Putin. Interesting. They made eye contact. Now, Richard has made contact with Trump at parties as well. Now, there's not many men I know who have made contact with both. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Eye contact. In, in not a political sense, just in an eye contact sense. Mm-hmm. Again, I, I totally get it. And I, I think the idea of respectful truth, truth is very well said. Yeah. Which people will understand more as we reveal the mystery of your family and your ancestry. Yeah. So, um, thank you for that. Now, I would imagine Richard is an incredible strategist. Just yeah. from what he's learned and what you described about chess and stuff, would you say that's true? Yes. Yeah. In the same sense, a lot of people, when they meet Richard, they feel so comfortable with him and so safe. They feel safe, like they're on 
a fair level ground and they will open up their souls and tell him the deepest stories. And I feel that they're doing it for almost an inner healing. And even the kids, we all comment, why did these people share this whole story with, you know, this stranger, Richard? It, it, they, it happens all the time. We actually have to make allowances for the conversations that Richard gets into because <laughs> mm-hmm. they can make you run behind all the time. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, the image I'm getting with that is it's like he's a portal himself and the portal goes to, shall we just say, a pure source. and. So all these beings subconsciously are drawn to him, right? And I think that the stories that people have gone through are such a cause of beauty and also such a cause of pain for people. And I'm seeing him kind of just take that in really evenly. Like, in an, it, it, you can correct me from him, but just taking it evenly, it goes past him. It's like, It goes almost like to the golden sun and just gets neutralized or something. It's very interesting. It it is. Does that make sense at all? Yeah. His his eyes sparkle. He's quite serious. He's very serious. His eyes will sparkle and a fairness comes over, like this feeling of fairness. Mm -hmm. It is. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, It's very admirable. Uh, it, and and comes from a, a, a place of non-judgment. Wow. And it's it's very, uh, it, it's a pillar. <laughs> yes, yes. But, let, but the kids love, this is very interesting, Marilee. Uh, if you, when you're speaking with Richard, if you do not speak your truth, then it gets to the strategy. So the, so okay. the kids go, the kids laugh because the kids go, here it comes, the Richard moment, and he will speak his truth to someone. And when I first met Richard, I would cringe. I would hunch over and, and uh, oh, here comes the icky moment because he would speak his truth with someone. But then I, and I, I for a while in the beginning of our relationship, I would, I would ask him to tame it down. But he said to me, if they can't handle that, that we're not supposed to be around those people. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That is challenging. Now, oh. I consider you <laughs> a, an absolute equal, by the way. And, um, but that is pretty challenging, you know, it, because yeah. what it's going to bring up is all the human ego, like, oh my God, it's embarrassing. Or it was so hard on this person, you know, like from the, a feminine compassionate standpoint but I'm loving what you're telling me about him I think it's awesome <laughs> so thank you for sharing that and thank you Richard for allowing that to be revealed even though he's not here he's here and um so now that we've learned about Richard and there's more to discover I'd like you to describe your early upbringing, some of your early experiences, so that our audience can learn more about you. Um, As a child, I had um, a a little bit of funny hearing in my right ear, so it would ring a lot. Um, I had a dinosaur that I would have, or a dragon, being that would be with me all the time and reassure me he would always say to me that (laughs) it's okay they don't understand the language meaning the original language it's okay because I always used to think that uh everyone I was hearing their words it was like it was they were speaking Asian or um Mexican a language that I didn't understand and so he would reassure me, saying to me that this is okay. They don't understand this language. It's okay they don't understand. It's okay you don't understand their language. So it was like a reassuring being. And how he reassured you at a very young, what are we talking, two years old or something? Yeah, I remember really young. 
I've, I've got photographs where I remember him standing next to me. So the date of the photograph, I would have been 18 months, not two years, just coming on two years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for clarity for people where a lot of this is going to be somewhat new, um, you couldn't understand what he was saying, but you were able to keep your telepathic mind to mind, emotion to motion abilities, obviously, because you were yes. conversing back and forth. So you had that since birth, correct? From, yeah, two. I, from two. From my memory, two. And a dragon dinosaur friend. Oh my gosh, how fun is that? Yeah. What well, color? I can, Do you remember the I can, color? I remember his scales and I remember that it would only go up to the knees so I could never quite make out the face <laughs> uh-huh. um, but I would bump into his knees a lot <laughs> and so that, uh, so that means it must you, be, you were phasing in and out of third density then yeah because I could I could feel hit him because it it didn't it felt like a different texture uh-huh. but I'm, I guess to my family I would have looked a bit crazy (laughs) and then I had the ringing in my ear you know who's she talking to stop talking to them (laughs) ah interesting okay so were your parents open to all of this what they saw did they just go oh it's just your imagination how cute like a lot of parents do I I, yeah I I felt they felt I was a very uh, busy child had a, I had a lot of agendas to do, a lot of, I was always busy, so um, they, I guess they would have just put it down to that's just Elsa. <laughs> um, but the ringing in the ear, they, they, uh, they felt that they needed to step in because it was affecting my hearing. So uh, that's when they started taking me to the doctors and they would syringe hot water in my ear and this was quite a normal practice back then, uh-huh. uh, very painful practice. I was completely deaf after each session at the doctor's. Uh, yes. it, it, it's a syringe and they force hot water in your ear. It, yes, I don't know. Yes. yes. Anyway, um, which brings me to my, my story of near death, my first near death is uh, we were walking across the road and I would have been about four and my mother had my sister on her hip. We were crossing a four-lane highway and then another four lanes with the traffic going a different direction. Anyway, we were in the middle and my mother swung her arm, which I thought meant we were crossing, and I I couldn't hear because I had just come out of the doctor's surgery. I remember being in the middle of the road and feeling this extreme heat, like burning, like I could smell my my hair burning. And I opened my eyes and um, I saw white light glass and uh, it was actually the headlight of the car. I couldn't hear anything though, so it was quiet. It was so peaceful. And uh, I remember staring into this uh, headlight and then I looked back and my mother and my sister were screaming. There were cars stopped everywhere and people were getting out and running and screaming. It was very, I was more scared of them than the headlight. The headlight I felt was peace. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The the warmth of the headlight Mm -hmm. felt nice. Mm -hmm. But this, but the the horror faces running towards me was um, very disturbing, and I still to this day don't know if if I had gone or come back. But um, well, you might have uh, uh, that warm headlight thing could have been kind of the light portal. Yeah, you know that's been reported that one goes through, but you don't have any memory of anything around that whole thing past that not then at four but then something prevailed later in in 2017 which takes me back so which then please share that 
please share. Uh, so uh, we, I don't, we don't believe in time. Our whole family. So this is important that you, I guess, viewers understand this in the beginning because it relates to everything we talk about. There is no time. Time is a program. We call it an AI or a 3D-ness. It's a program. It's unnecessary. It's necessary if it's in your belief system. It's not necessary if you don't believe in it. We do not believe in it. So we believe that we can go back and collect moments at any moment and we call it moment collecting. And when you go back and collect a moment, you create expansion. So then your life becomes fuller. Oh, so, you're so beautiful. Yeah. So we believe you can go back and heal anything, any era, any time. And uh, not only can you heal it with yourself, but I can be sitting with someone else and moment collect in their realm so I can go through them as a channel so they become a porthole for for me and I can go in and collect moments from them then then it creates expansion that way (laughs) I love that my heart (laughs) is just laughing and um I have to share something personal with you when I was born And when I was young, I would get up in the morning, my family, and I remember doing this a couple of times, but my family just says, yep, it's absolutely true. And this went on for a long time. I think it was sixth grade till I learned how to tell time. Uh, I would wake up and go, is today tomorrow? Is yesterday today? What's what's today? And they'd go, no, no, Marilee, today's today. And I'd like, hmm. (laughs) And that kept up. And now from what I know from healing and how malleable time is and that it's a made up construct and what you're sharing and all that and how you can use it in healing, that was the only bleed through I got of the, from the truth of my being when I was young was around time. I'd look at a clock and I couldn't even tell time. Now, just sharing that little point there. <laughs> wow. That's. It, it's huge. It's very tricky for the m- mind to let go of it, though, because everything we do relates to it. So to dissolve this belief um, can be uh, irritating, can be painful, can cause disease. Uh, but it also then, if it can swing one way on the pendulum, it swings the other way. So not only does it cause all this irritation and triggering and waking up, but it also swings the other way and it creates healing. And and it's through that, through the opposite swing mm-hmm. is where we find the healing. So bringing back to that first near-death experience, uh, I did a hypnosis on a craft experience that we had and in that hypnosis they took me to that moment they were there aha uh-huh. so there was some missing time probably or time dilation in the sense of well, what they, happened there that well, other didn't, people didn't experience they they don't <clears throat> they don't look at it as missing time it's just my frequency had to build up and learn things before they could share that moment with me. It's pretty cool. So that is totally cool. <clears throat> Especially like when you're doing this hypnosis or Reiki or any of these spiritual practices and it and it does take us back to these moments, then you start to realize that every single step, every breath you take, every step you make, every path you cross, Every eye you meet, there is no randoms. Yes. I know people, we love saying the word synchronicity, but there is a plan. It is a setup. It is yes. an agreement. And knowing that, when you find that out in yourself, brings peace to you. Mm-hmm. 
and a calmness because you go, I know all that craziness is happening, but it, it's okay. The universe, the cosmos, the frequency has got my back. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think we use synchronicity as the stepping stone from um, a coincidence to being guided by our higher self or something. I think it's a stepping stone to get to, to where you're talking about. And then, of course, how the brain deals with, which I've dealt with in other shows, the interesting thing about um, free will and and destiny or the plan you know it's a very interesting that would be for another time <laughs> we'll discuss but thank you so much for that uh i also would love to do a show with you in the future because i've moved time around to get rid of a disease you know like i've gone back where it didn't exist and popped through that kind of thing and i have a feeling you would be great at teaching that for people so maybe we'll do that in the future that would be yeah. a fun thing so now also, I think I remember you telling me that around 17 years old, speaking of a plan, you had a tarot reading I, I, that said your third eye is awakening. Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, I was with a makeup artist and uh, I had just started my studio in Brisbane and she took me to a tarot card reader, which was my first reading. And the tarot card reader went into great depths and said, I have never seen an eye so open. It's waiting to open. It's waiting for your eye is waiting for you to open. <laughs> now, I, I looked at her and was, I had no idea of a third eye. I had no idea what she was going on about. She said that I would have multiple children and and at that point I switched off because I was a career woman, you know, I was about to travel the world. So having children was not on the cards, literally, but it was on the cards. <laughs> so, Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I don't think you do anything halfway, either one of you. I mean, <laughs> eight children, that's pretty. I, like Eight oh, children, oh, right? Yeah. Eight children. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. So you had that and you didn't understand it at the time, but now looking back, you're like, whoa, that's right on. Now, I want to um, go back just a smidgen to when you talked about you were being on uh, during that near-death experience and you found yourself later through hypnosis you discovered you were on a spacecraft correct okay so what did that spacecraft look like what did the beings look like how did you feel and what else do you recall about that that you'd like to share um so we have seen at so um going to that point in time november 2017 we had seen a lot of craft by this stage um, our whole family have seen them, uh, many different versions. But this particular one, I because I used to love walking in the paddocks late at night and checking on the horses. We have 10 horses and I would go out and uh, just sit with them or to, just go out and watch foxes and owls and not for a long time but just, you know, 20 minutes, look at the stars and I was in the middle of the horse herd and uh, then I could, the horses started to get really restless, like there was a predator coming. So I, now I'm on alert because I'm tapped in with them, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, they did something odd. They looked up, which horses don't usually look up <laughs> They because all their predators are on the ground. So for them to look up um, usually means craft. So it could be a plane or a helicopter. So they looked up. So I'm following their ears, looking up, and their ears are twitching all different directions, their ears. So it's not twitching one way. I look up at the stars and then the stars melted into blue veins. So now all the stars are becoming blue veins and the whole sky looks like a black mirror or obsidian. And it was it was heading north. It was it, 
took up pretty much the whole valley that we live in, which was a, we were on a big farm. It was like a 260 acres of land I'm talking about. So the whole valley and it was heading north. It, was, it did, I could see it had a, a bit of a triangular shape, mm. but it had all these blue veins coming through. And then in 2017, I don't remember anything else. I don't remember getting back into the bed. I don't remember coming inside. I don't I I don't remember walking through a horse herd, which is tricky at night because you don't want to get kicked. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't remember walking under a fence. <laughs> I don't remember wet feet. I don't remember wiping my feet. Nothing. All the practices that you do coming back into the house. I don't remember. I just remember waking up the next morning and saying to Richard, Oh, I saw something <laughs> outside. Anyway. Fascinating. What so then, go ahead, keep going. So from that point, uh, my family noticed that I was not the same person anymore. They would stopped calling me mom or Elsa. Uh, Richard said, it's like you're not my wife anymore. Um, who, am, who are we talking to? And But to me, I didn't notice anything different, but to them they said I was definitely different. Went on for a month or so. And it became very testing on the whole family because I was a foreigner to them. Uh, Anyway, Richard just was, Richard being Richard went, that's it. (laughs) We're going to see kinesiology. So we went and had kinesiology. Applied kinesiology, folks, where you muscle test uh, to find out the truth of what your body went through. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, kinesiology is sometimes your mind switches off things, but the body doesn't lie. The physical body does not lie. So kinesiology, they test all your uh, hydration, they test your eyes, they test the oils in your body, they test if your chakras are in line. Everything was fine. Kinesiologist said, it's all good. Um, I'm going to test one more thing, which I don't usually test on people. Anyway, as she said, is this an outer world uh, being or experience? And uh, from that point on, she was shaking. She trembled and left the room. And oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, oh, what have I done? <laughs> what, what's going on? Anyway, she came back in with another practitioner and uh, we worked out that I had been gone for 10 years in human time but 20 minutes in our time. And I said, well, how how does that work? And they said they don't know and pretty much the session finished very quickly after that. They kind of wanted me to out, (laughs) which is fine. (laughs) Uh, I understand. I got in the car and I told Richard and he was so relieved I wasn't possessed and so was I. And then we left it at that because, you know, I'm not possessed now, so it's all okay. We've cleared it in kinesiology. We left it. Wow. I I know, right? You weren't ready to look at it yet then or something. No, I was not ready. Mm -hmm. Now that point, from that point of acknowledgement of that it was an outer world experience was the catalyst then for the children. The kids then, it was like something, it was like a button switched on and the kids started to draw the beings. They started to encounter. It was like it was an okay button. It was like, okay, she's here now. (laughs) It's all okay now. (laughs) All right, over souls, (laughs) come on in and tell the kids. (laughs) Wow. And each child has had different depending on their personality and their oversoul and their soul agreement on Gaia here has a different uh, flavour or essence on how they approach beings or ETs or and that's entertaining in itself. <laughs> Which is lovely and we'll discuss that in um, part two. Now what yeah. you shared with me is common in my research. I just thought I'd tell you that. Oh. Thank you. That's so nice to hear. Um, so, folks, this family does not watch um, many any shows at all. And we'll get into that when they talk about their lifestyle to keep all your awareness awake. That will be another show. But uh, so you need to know that she hasn't seen any of my shows. They're, they're not used to 
listening to all that stuff. So they stay very pure and authentic to their own being. So in millions of cases, if, if I may share this, is it okay to just share this with you? It's one thing. In millions of cases of super soldiers, people in the military and civilians, but especially uh, when people have certain missions that are important. They, for a long time, have had the technology and ability, and this is both military, higher forces, all kinds of, right? They have the ability to remove you, they call it kind of time dilation, from your third density reality, so they can pick you up from a bed or this or any, any situation, accident or anything, and you can be gone, gone in time, Generally, they're 20 and back because they end up serving in military and secret projects and all kinds, brought back. And as long as you're brought back within 15 minutes of when you were taken, there seems to be no problem. So I think you should know that. <laughs> oh, wow. And nobody even knows you're missing are it's not an issue and this has happened to a lot of people it happens from a situation of they're actually serving in military and higher secret forces it happens from a situation if you have contract with certain of your star family or extraterrestrial beings where they're training or they're working on you and they want to download you with a bunch of stuff and come back so that's why we call that's generally 20 back many of my guests on my shows have had 60 and back so they're actually 90 or 100 and they look like they're 30. Moment collecting back on whom I was in those few months I was a little lost I had all these frequencies downloaded into me as a I was like a conduit for the children and the family oh. so, so the kids are getting it my husband's getting it the beings are getting it, but I'm not up to speed yet. So from that point on to probably February 2022, when I did the hypnosis, that whole was a learning curve of all the, all the different frequencies, and, boy, was it a, a fast one too. So how yeah. many years was that? In 2017, uh, three, five years. In a five year period, I learned of all my possible things that I could do with my spiritualness. I, I can see into souls, um, I can talk to beings, I could heal ghosts, I can go to sacred spots that I don't know about and turn up there. Um, I can see pain bodies. I can see the inner child. I can connect with others over souls. It, it, the list goes on and I, I, I do question this a lot. Why so much? Why so many beings? And obviously I'm meant to speak up and show others that all is possible. All is possible. Yes. You have to intentionally and be aware that you're doing it with truce. It's a fast track. It's well, it was fast track <laughs> it's for like me. A fast track. It seems like you had abilities, but not to the level that were downloaded once you returned. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, I would. Uh, I can see things in mirrors. I would. I would hide from mirrors a lot because mirrors would talk to me all the time. <laughs> and all the portals, time, folks. Uh, mirrors are used as portals for beings to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I would, as even as a child, I would a, a duck when I would walk past mirrors <laughs> because I knew that there was going to be so many messages coming through. And at that those points in those moments in time, I did not know how to communicate or understand what was going on. Um, it was scary. Very scary, yeah. Did you share it with your husband? Uh he was kind of a bit funny about mirrors as well when I met him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was kind of cool. So he was letting you catch up at your own pace. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So you didn't you wouldn't admit it as much as me, but I was like, I saw you. You you ducked past that miracle. <laughs> he, he was like, no, I didn't. I loved that they came through in November 2017. So they gave me enough time before all the uh, lockdowns happened. They gave me preparation time to start put, putting it all into place mm-hmm. and understand. It's very hard because uh, I would not go on uh, a lot of uh, internet. So all this information, it seriously had to come from within and learn from stories I'd heard as a child to uh, actual happening experiences. So I had to interpret it into how I had learned things. So I, I wasn't really around many spiritual people. So I didn't even think to go to spiritual people, really. Besides kinesiology, acupuncture, um, health things, uh, we, we we didn't really go and see tarot card readers or, or psychics. Or so it, 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 was, it was a lot of information to to process. <laughs> yes, and, and confusing. You it, and you were doing it mostly by yourself, which is difficult too. Well, in the beginning stages, uh, with a lot of the the things that have happened with the family, I had to keep it to myself as well until I knew certain things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because uh, of the saying of intention, I thought if I said things out loud, then they would happen. So I was, I had a lot of fear from that, mm-hmm. and uh, then that did cause dis ease which then started uh, my mouth regressing. I, so Not disease, you mean? Yeah, big time. And uh, well, I realized. You were holding back your words. Exactly. And Richard was like, you look, you look like a skeleton. You really look, you're starting to look really weird. Your teeth look like they're going to just fall out of your, out of your mouth. Wow. We're either going to have to go to a dentist or you're going to have to have some type of, we're going to have to address this. You, you're putting it off. And he said, I know what you're like. You're not going to go to a hospital, are you? And I was like, no. So I went in and researched metaphysically what those things could be because I believe that most illnesses in the body come from the metaphysical. Anyway, it was, I wasn't speaking out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I started to speak out and they would heal. And I'd start to speak mm-hmm. out and they would heal. Then I'd give it two weeks, not speak out, and then it would go back. Go, okay, now this is a cosmetic reason. Are you guys <laughs> messing with me or what? <laughs> in your face. I, yeah, literally in my face. Like You can't wow. ignore this. No. Well, look at what you're doing now. Okay. Yeah. You are speaking out. I know. With beautiful Merrily. <laughs> I know. Because we're, we're behind the scenes people as well. We call, well, sure. we're, we're used to making others beautiful, seeing their inner beauty and presenting it to the world. So for us to speak out and be in front of a camera is very foreign it challenges everything that we believe in so or that we've been trained in our professions you know when you started speaking out were you received by other people around you you know or did you get slapped in the face and the giggle factor and the fear factors and all that stuff that comes when someone shares their authenticity uh, so when I started uh, joining um, the internet, Facebook and uh, Zoom groups um, was through the lockdowns uh, because we couldn't shoot as photographers. So mm. and we started to go into some smaller groups and then strange stuff started to happen. So I, they, people would have me in their meditations healing them. People would have connections with all the beings around me. Um, mm. uh, people would be, uh, first of all, a lot of 
a uh, few people in the group thought I was from the CIA or the FBI because I could see things in them and uh, they thought I was remote viewing and I didn't even know what remote viewing was but I was doing it <laughs> uh-huh. so but they thought I was some secret agent I'm like how can I be secret agent and I'm in gumboots <laughs> out in the paddocks we did have military craft around us and things like that and it kind of kept happening so it would it would prove things to us so those things we just see as not threats but confirmations we believe that um our frequency is at a certain frequency so it's okay it looks after us yes but sure if we want to delve into that frequency over there or down there which is fine we can do that if we choose it's free will we just don't choose to we don't need we we have seen those things we understand those things we just don't need to do that now exactly. it's not that it's not now now <laughs> we don't need to exactly. do that now. exactly it. it's run yeah. old stories from third day to four and we're we're maintaining higher frequencies so we can yeah. create the world we want exactly so people would say your children are drawing all these beings and i say yeah they are but are you worried about them i said when you meet the kids seriously i'm i'm all worried for the beings so because <laughs> i know wait till you see her family in part two folks Woo-hoo! <laughs> So basically, when they downloaded you with all the frequencies that were then given to the kids overnight, even though all these kids were came in consciously as part of the soul family, but overnight, they start having their abilities activated. And that shows up as drawing very well. I think Gigi and uh, is one, right? And uh, is one who does that a lot. And um, drawing the beings that have been showing up at your abodes for how long now? Since that day. Which is? 20, 20, November 2017. So since 2017, folks, her girls have drawn up to 600, is that right? Yeah. Up they, to 600 different beings that love visiting this family. <laughs> yeah. So they now we have Grand Central Station. <laughs> someone described it as in you were taking pictures of models, people would sit for portraits, and now you have the beings sitting for portraits. And of course, yeah, of course. Like, and she's, we not, make them look she's not kidding. They come in and go, do us, do us, do us, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we have one. I'm going to share this story because yeah. it, it really, we had one being come through for Merrily as our frequent. Because what happens is with the frequency connects with someone and then the kids will tap into the frequency through Merrily through, through me. So one being has particularly come through for Merrily. And I keep asking Gigi may I take a picture to show Merrily and her viewers? And um, I'm sort of it comes back with hostility from Gigi. She said, it's not finished. They have to wait for every last brush stroke. Wow. And there's something about each brush stroke has energy in it. So mm-hmm. um, how, how the beans present like things. Players. They don't leave, yeah, they don't leave her alone until it's complete and then they pr- let me present it. But if I ask any sooner, I get in a lot of trouble. Gets spanked. Yeah, I, I get it. I get Thank it. Thank you, Gigi. And that's fine. I'll wait. That, I'm honored by that. Thank you. So, all your kids, more or less, they're all fine about that. Or did they have issues and they started putting down boundaries and they were saying, this is good, this isn't, you can come visit now, whatever, whatever. Or did, was it a normal reality to their souls? The, the first ones that came through, so uh, I'll, I'll give you a little, like, uh, summary of how it happened. It started as orbs and uh, glimpses and uh, solar flares and then it went to ghosts 
and ghost type encounters. And then once we got through that stage, then the we had a few like darker feeling beings come through. And once we shifted the darker feeling beings into why they had in, encountered with us, then it went to um, more dynamic, uh, more specific type frequencies and beings. It was like we were, it was like they were building us. Like seriously, it was like we were in homeschooling. We homeschool our kids, but we were in being homeschooling, including myself. Yeah. They learned that. Through through me meeting these um, people through the Zoom, I learnt about I learnt scrying, I learnt um, mirror work that I was all, I was already doing all these things, but now I had a label and a name, and I could play with the children and show them those techniques, and they they just do them like I do. They it's like honestly, it's like second nature. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't ask it to come in. We don't try just happens and it's not forced and it's no big deal either it's not this oh we stand on a hill and it's not anything like that we just do that for a second and then we do the dishes yes or or do that or we go out and garden or or go shopping or or we and we'll do it when we're out and about too We, we we're doing it all the time it's a normal way of being at a higher frequency. You're doing yes. the work, you're blending it. You don't have to make it freaky. It's it's yes. part of activating a higher frequency. And uh, which reminds me that Nikola Tesla, my famous inventor, uh, who has you know hundreds of patents that we utilize today, he, he has a quote that he says, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, Think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So why don't you talk about that, how you feel about understanding and experiencing energy frequency? Because obviously that's what you've been doing with these multiple species and your whole life. And then having to kind of, uh, what's the word, translate it (laughs) down to this reality, so to speak. So a, a good way to, um, because people would have watched these shows, is Lucy, how she can pull a frequency. And then you have the matrix with the matrix coming down. But uh, the messages I got about those same things was when you see raindrops coming down. Mm. And uh, mm-hmm. to, to me... Um, the rain, the water holds the Akashic res- records. So there's no such thing to our belief of um, higher IQ. Higher IQ is part of the program and the systems. So you can have a higher IQ in the program or systems, but intelligence to us is being able to tap into the frequencies, right? So the more you can tap into the frequencies, the more intelligence happens. Now, then here comes the humans with labelings and I, I am a human so I have to remember all the labels and the names and they have a frequency in themselves. <laughs> so uh, frequency does not have an emotion. Frequency does not have a label. Frequency does not have a hierarchy. Frequency doesn't have a good or a bad. It's which frequency you, you choose. So you can choose the frequency swinging that way or the frequency swinging this way. Free will comes back to you. So for the, you know, 10 years prior to this, Richard and I have been cleaning, cleansing, healing our bodies, um, doing our own like shadow work, dealing with our dark things in our closet that weren't serving us. We were doing all those things. So we've cleaned all that up. So now we are clean slates, ready for any frequency. You want, if you want that frequency, if that frequency wants to cross our path, it has a reason. It has a a teaching, a lesson, something we have to learn from it. We take that frequency, it's a moment collected, and then it passes. So then we can take another. Now, now we can take a few at a time. (laughs) Yeah. So, so then 
Is it overwhelming for you? Yeah. So that's when the dark chocolate comes in. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. We all crave dark chocolate and I never knew why. And the kids said, Mom, it's on Harry Potter. And I went, are you serious? And they said, yeah. And I went, oh, well, again, it's like a confirmation that it, it assists. Well, it is I, overwhelming. I thought I was making this up when people said, why did you come to Earth? And I said, for diversity in chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's true. Anyway. It's, yeah. <laughs> so, so what about the really uh, highly compassionate people and empaths who are already feeling so much? The last thing they want, may want to do is open up to more frequencies. So this obviously has to do with your specific mission, right? And what is your, would you say, your specific mission? Why are you here from your understanding so far? Well, I think it comes back to the interesting thing about speaking your truth, and um, which was one of the things I was very attracted to with Richard, is he speaks his truth. And so do I. I can feel the frequency of a lie. And sometimes people will say things and they don't actually know that they're lying or saying a story about themselves, but they've held it for so long they believe it. And I can feel an inner truth in a lie. I mean, yes, but, it, but it's okay. You know, that's okay. I, I, it, there's, honestly, there's no judgment. It's just where, where that person's at. And I'm actually grateful that I meet those people because then it shows where I'm at as well. And, again, it's not a frequency. It's not a judgment. It's a frequency. So, again, no hierarchy, no judgment, no emotions. It's just purely a frequency. Now, that, if you can apply that to everything you do in life, then all the drama and all the all the anger kind of melts away because you realize that um so you might go and uh you might go to a shopping center and that holds a frequency there now you might be able to handle the frequency but maybe four or five other people can't handle the frequency so they act up they behave differently they behave in a uh, a dis-ease so then there's conflict but if you understand it's just the shopping center and then you leave the shopping center and then you're back in the car and you're going home and everything returns to normal you don't hang on to the argument because you just realize that it was just a frequency and it, it actually it does it brings peace knowing that and uh <laughs> mm -hmm. we um we believe that where you live on the land, make sure that you check where you're living on the land. You're there for a purpose and a reason. You're not placed on that spot in that part of Gaia for no reason. You're placed there for part of your journey. So what is it there? Are you meant to do something there? Is it your neighbour? Is it someone you're meant to meet? Is it the what's underneath the ground, like the, the crystals or the rocks or the type of soil underneath? Is it uh, water flow underneath? Like if people start to look at all the reasons, they'll start to see why they behave certain ways. They'll understand their frequency and then they'll understand others' frequencies with them. And then you'll understand why it clashes sometimes. <laughs> So what is the game? Is the game to be able to handle all frequencies and then choose what you want in your reality without judgment? What is the, uh, is there a? Uh... I remember hearing, um, I think it's the creator of language, could be Thoth. And uh, I remember hearing another, another godlike being say, uh, that humans, if they could understand and control their emotions, they would they would have the power, which then reminds me of the films Star Wars with the Force. Remember the Force, you know, feel the Force. And, and then um, 
you know, a lot of uh, witch movies or uh, wizards where they would have, have, like Harry Potter, would have to go into himself and find find his inner power. And Hollywood's very great, but it makes you think that it's over there. <laughs> That's for them to do. But where are all those people in those movies? And so you, if once you find all those things that make your frequency, then you understand all your frequencies and then you'll understand that when you come into line with another frequency and it feels funny, you, you learn to then question why does it feel funny? Am I meant to learn something? Is it triggering something in me? Is it reflection? Or is it just meant to heal this frequency? Because sometimes it's got nothing to do with you. It's just meant to ground them or hold space for them. Mm-hmm. And uh, But if they keep showing up, and that icky feeling keeps showing up, then you you know that that is something in your frequency that you might have to just twig a little bit. And it, it's not this huge thing that you have to twig. Sometimes it's just saying it out loud. <laughs> yeah. There you just go again. Yeah. Speaking. Mm. Speaking it. Yes, that's beautiful. So uh, to, su- to sum that up, I just looked at the clock. It said 444. I love that when that happens. (laughs) So to sum your mission up, it's obviously to help awaken people. And what else would you say around that? Well, uh, I think there's a a term saying uh, give give a job to someone that's always really busy. And uh, like I said, we weren't planning on having that. Eight children. I mean, seriously, eight children, and you've got two professions going, so two photographers, and then we have all the farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just throw six hundred beans at them all. <laughs> that's like, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. <laughs> so I, I feel that our our mission is, um to shed, uh, share and show an example of how to be light with this and, and make it a day-to-day, make it, it be with your children, be with your husband, be, on the, be working, be your daily chores as well and, and an allowing of it and, and showing that... <laughs> This does sound all, I mean, as these uh, chats with you unfold, the <laughs> craziness of it to someone that hasn't heard any of this, will it will just seem like Alice in Wonderland. But to us, it's happening every day, all the time, all the time. 24-7, you've integrated. So it's actually very balanced. It's, it's, it's do you think one of the reasons we incarnate is to ground into Gaia to talk about that a little bit uh, um, every step you take and every voice you put out so you're creating a moment so now we've created a moment and maybe in 10 years I can come back and revisit this moment so I it's so then that becomes our term of expansion. Um, so I always, we, we always do. We hear people say, oh, the kids have grown up so fast. Time is going so fast. But to, to Richard and I, who have been practicing since we've met, you can speed up time or slow time down. So we have been in some quite serious uh, vehicle accidents and we know when they're about to happen on the freeway we can see them happening. We're interpreting other people's movements because they're not, they're on default. They're not in tune with what's happening. And it is like the matrix you weave through around the bullets. And we've had been on the freeway heading to Sydney in rush hour traffic with four lanes, having a car come directly towards us spinning like this at um, 110 kilometres an hour. I'm not sure what speed that is in miles, but it's fast. And 
So then you have then all the reactions of everybody else. So their cars hit that car. They start spinning. And Richard and I are in slow motion driving through the cars. Pull over safely while all the other cars behind us are in an accident yes. and are able to get out of the car and see if people are okay. Yes. And you do that by, by would you say, uh, creating your own reality by a different frequency, what some people would call slowing time or speeding up time to weave your way through that? Or, or how do you perceive, like how would you describe what you were doing? So that, that, that day in particular, um, we were traveling behind and I said, I can feel this, this car in front is not feeling good with the other car in front. And Richard was like, okay, so then our alert goes on. Mm -hmm. So then we're traveling over a few more hills and then, then the, uh, acting out of these two characters happen. So they have an argument, these two characters, this car drives in front of this car and swerves in. <laughs> so it was quite an act of hostility in mm -hmm. front of us. So these are tricky situations, right, because yes. we, we were the next car to go into them mm -hmm. and we're travelling at great speeds with these cars. But because we were aware and alert probably five or ten minutes prior to their behavior and their frequency, we were ready for their frequency. Yes. And <laughs> you see how it plays? Yeah. You can maneuver through it. Yeah. Yeah. And I had one very simple experience compared to that, but because um, uh, I like to drive reading the minds of people so I can anticipate sometimes what they're doing. But when I was younger, the one that stood out the most was I was coming around a corner at an intersection and it was like this voice spoke to me and said, pull over, like quick. So I pulled over and about three cars crashed, <laughs> like boom. And I'm like, whoa, what was that about? And what I got was you were processing a lot of anger and you should not be driving while you're doing that. Wow. And I'm like, whoa it's like we're so much more powerful i mean this is this is like this all these shows are about honoring yourselves as a creator and at what point do you want to step up you know and whoa that was like a wake-up call so now you've shared your voice your frequency and i've shared my voice and my frequency on those two stories now people, your viewers, your audience will hear those stories and go, that's what happened to me. So now they go back and they moment collect what happened and they said, did I have a voice coming through? Who was that voice coming through? Was it my uh, ancestors? Was it my oversoul? Was it a ghost? Was it a being? Who came through? And so then this moment that we've just shared triggers others so then we've just created expansion through the spoken word that's, <laughs> it's beautiful that, right that's it's so pretty. beautiful it's so I pretty love that collecting moments because that's really what life is about i thought if there was ever a fire in my place what would i take out you know and of course you help with kids or animals but it, at, this was a while back and i said my photographs and i said why would i take the photographs and it was collecting moments. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're doing. <laughs> Maybe it's to ensure we're actually physical. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So it's interesting because as you were speaking, uh, one of the things that I, I, I do uh, avoid as much as possible when I'm speaking is the word time. Because every time I say time, it's time. And time is tie me. Ah, oh, yes, yes. It's tying me to, to yes. the time. It's tying, tying, tying you to down the time. rather than yeah. playing with time or playing. Moment, 
Moment collecting sounds like um, a basket collecting colourful yeah. Easter eggs to me. It's yeah. like collecting stars. Yeah, or, or, or apples or something. Like it, yeah. it has a fun. It has a fun way of being fast. So, I so love that. I will carry that with me always. Now, so let's get back because um, <laughs> we'll spend a couple more minutes and uh, with Richard. So you shared your mission, and this one is about you, you and him. This first part and an understanding of some of the philosophy. So he came in to your life or, or what is his role and, and mission in the family? Uh, well, he, he's like a, a pioneer. He, he starts the new. He always has. He's always started the new. And and I am the doer, so I've always been the one, right, right, well, this is how we do it. We can do it this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And then he's like, it's too much, just focus on one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very female and male argument. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so then we put it into practice. So uh, it, whether it's teaching me to ride a motorbike to speaking with beings, to putting up the website. It's, and he will, he's, uh, he's a sounding board for me because he supports everything that, he knows that I speak the truth. He knows that I never tell lies. So he knows that I might have some false beliefs back in the early days but he knows that I speak my truth so even if he says to me I don't like what I'm hearing he still knows that deep down it has come from a place of truth within me so he can't avoid it either (laughs) there you go yeah now you mentioned the word oversoul and you were um there's a mission he has around that too, correct? Yeah. Yes. You want to describe what you feel comfortable describing about that? So we believe everybody has has an oversoul. And again, it comes back to labeling or naming. Uh, you could call it your inner child. You could call it your higher self um, or your essence. But so each oversoul chooses to come to Gaia and incarnate. And Richard's oversoul has called us in to incarnate. Yeah. Again. <laughs> so does that mean you're part of his oversoul? No. No, we are completely different entities, beings, uh, warriors. Uh, each family member has uh, worked out, we've all worked out our identities and uh, the all family members know who their oversoul is, what their role is, what they're doing, where they've been. That's so wonderful. So this was then more of a mission from his oversoul, right, to get volunteers <laughs> who were willing to do that, more or less, that and like how would you how would you say that are you you all jumped on board or no, you're no <laughs> uh he's over soul and he's um the group that he's with uh um sent out an invitation that you cannot refuse ah got it yeah and when you meet richard that's exactly what richard's like you couldn't be more <laughs> If he asks you to do (laughs) no. (laughs) Yeah. So he, like, his oversoul sent out a mission. It's on again. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. It's taken taken this uh, a while to work all this and piece it all together. But, again, 
But again, with 10 people in the family all doing it, it comes together real fast. <laughs> because, How sorry. did you receive that mission? Did you receive it as an orb or mentally or physically or spiritually? Like, how did you come together? You all just came together and said, okay, we're reincarnating again together. Gigi had a uh, beam come through and it was like a blue light orb or there's many different types of orbs, but this one is like how she describes it. It was like a blue light message that went out to the oversouls and uh. called us in. And the kids know who is the oldest oversoul because it's not in order of age of the birth of kids. They know um, if each oversoul has met the other oversoul before or worked with on other missions. Um I, I know, right? This is so cool. so cool. I know. Uh, they know. Um, uh, they know. So they, the kids are, have a game. So when we go shopping, they, the uh, Jerry is one of the oldest oversouls, but she's number six child. So she's down on the. But they say that well, she gets to decide because she's older than all of us. So like she gets to decide who gets what when we go shopping or it's it's just funny because they play with it as well it's not it's so cute it's so can, great yeah, yeah. so they're like so the reason why you can't say no to Richard I'm uh doing a, a, a hypothesis is because he he's comes from one of the oldest oversouls creator yeah. oversouls in a, in a manner of speaking yes okay yeah. okay all right wow i could just go on forever with you, but uh we are we ask the oversouls in time so then we go back to time me so we ask them how many years it is and they literally all the oversouls laugh at us when we ask it's like the most to them it's like it's like we've asked the most stupidest question. And so we laugh at ourselves for asking because the kids want to know, you know, who's how how old? How old? Is it like a year and a half older? Or and so, I don't think it works like that. Because <laughs> it's a big deal when you're a kid who's 15, who's 15 and a half, 15 and three quarters. <laughs> and you know, people have been so trained in the hierarchy trip you know they have been like and, and kind of the healthy competition and teasing and all of that you know so that's a that's a one up in game okay so instead of your job I'm going to use that I'm going to use that as a uh, ammunition and go my oversoul is <laughs> way older than your oversoul <laughs> okay so um, and folks, most people think of oversouls, you know, again, they're all labels, but it's, it can be, it's the highest aspect kind of of your higher self. A lot of you are used to the term higher self. So say you have this incarnate part of you known as Marilyn, and that is being overseen by an oversoul that my imagination says has different parallels going off on that. There, and there, I mean, is by a higher self is what I'm saying. And there could even be several higher selves. And then that is orchestrated by an oversoul. It's kind of how I look at it. Does that make sense to you at all? Yeah. And yeah. the oversoul is the part of you that has the most awareness, information, accumulation consciously. And then the whole point is trying to pass that to you in a third density, fourth density, fifth density reality um, is challenging, but evidently it's not challenging for your family. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can see why you have a very important mission uh, because so many are able to come and share with you and you do it in a lighthearted way because you contain so much light. So I think we should draw part one 
to a close and thank you so much for sharing your beautiful spirit and wisdom and amazing stories. And um, I'd like for you to share how people can contact you. Uh, and also because you do private, highly intuitive Zoom one-on-one -on -one sessions and folks, her abilities, because I questioned her earlier, would fill up like pages, okay? <laughs> she has almost all abilities, uh, clairvoyance, claircognizance, you know, all of them um, to, to serve others with, and some you mentioned today. So let people know where they can contact you, okay? They can contact at the moment through the website. It's uh, called Spin Beings, uh, S P I N Beings, B E I N G S dot com. And send an email. We are doing sessions, uh, which we started last week, which is very exciting. Uh, and yeah, we don't even, we don't class ourselves as healers or anything, but I will listen to your frequency and then, then it unfolds. That's that's how I'm. That that's what the kid said. So what is it you do? And I said, <laughs> What are you going to do to these people? I said, well, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to listen to their spoken word and go from there. I will once I hear them, I will know. But, but this this involves you can see into the bodies, feel the bodies, all of it. Yeah. It's very very yeah, advanced. It's the, one thing. it's the whole lot. It's the whole shebang. <laughs> so, um, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. So folks, thanks for joining us. And in part two, Elsa will be introducing you to all eight of her children and they're all fully awake, which is amazing. And awake in the way that I'm using it means not programmed and fully remembers the truth of your being and acts like a creator on this planet because we are all creator. Please note that all material in this Cosmic Brilliance mini series we are doing together, including the drawings, title, and unique subtitles for each part are now copyrighted as of September 25th, 2022. And so, don't forget to like and subscribe and click on notifications so you'll know when episode two is up and will be arriving soon. I feel very honored to have you be so curious and expansive as to participate in this and especially you, Elsa. Thank you so, so much for your courage to step out and your generosity of spirit. Thank you, Marilyn. It's been um, fun. <laughs> it has been fun. All right, folks. So onwards and upwards. 